Welcome to Agenda Edina, a news program summarizing the actions taken at City Hall that affect you most. I'm your host, Dorothea Marty. The community is celebrating completion of two new recreational areas in Edina. Grand opening celebrations were held last month for the latest addition on the Edina Promenade and a renovated Pamela Park. A new water feature and landscaping were added to the Edina Promenade, a greenway that connects the Southdale area's various retail, residential, and recreational amenities. The sculpture, Three Dancing Sandhill Cranes, was installed as a permanent piece of art in the new stretch of the Edina Promenade, located in the area behind the new Think Bank and Lunds and Byerly store. So we're really uh, proud of the fact that what we did out here was we put in a public realm amenity that we thought would spur private development around it, and that's exactly what's happened. The project at Pamela Park began last fall. Improvements include a new shelter building, the conversion of the north field to a sand peat field, changing the lighted field to an artificial turf field, the addition of paved trails around the park, and the expansion of the parking lots. Uh, this beautiful new shelter building uh, that we're in is amazing. Uh, it's going to be available for residents to use for, for parties and events and, uh, and as, a, as a warming house during the winter as well. The Park and Recreation Department's other big construction project for the year, the new driving range and par 3 course at Braemar Golf Course, is nearing completion. It should be finished in the coming days and is scheduled to open early next summer. Showing its commitment to being a community for all, the City Council recently approved an affordable housing policy that will apply to all new multifamily developments of 20 or more units that require a certain rezoning or amendment to the comprehensive plan. Affordable housing is necessary to maintain a diverse population and provide housing for those who work in a community. Since the land available to develop additional housing is limited in Edina, the Council believes it is essential that a reasonable portion be developed into affordable units. Affordable housing is not subsidized housing. Housing is deemed affordable if it can be paid for by a person whose income is 60% or less of the area median gross income. Uh, the foundation believes, I believe, that this is a uh, really important policy for the city and that it's going to you know, encourage um, the uh, um, more diversity of, uh, of housing in our community, and we're really we're thrilled about that. At the time a residential development is proposed and requires rezoning to planned unit development or an amendment to the comprehensive plan, the city will consider such things as density bonuses, parking reductions, tax increment financing, and deferred low interest loans from the Edina Housing Foundation to obtain affordable housing. They're looking to get a change in our zoning or comprehensive plan. We're looking to get affordable housing in exchange for that. So that's where the give to get comes in. They're getting the potential for more density, more height, whatever it is they're asking for, or a rezoning. And the city has a chance to get affordable housing. In some cases, providing affordable units might not be economically feasible or practical. In those cases, the city would require a developer to build them elsewhere in the community or negotiate an alternative. A newly formed group of active teens is working to promote the overall well-being of their peers at Edina High School. Edina TV's Matt Koskinen has the story. Edina High School senior Adi Mittal served two years on the city's Community Health Commission and was inspired to put his experience to use at the high school. And probably the Community Health Commission was probably one of the most main like events that led me to found this because without that experience I wouldn't have like learned how to conduct the meetings or learn like what topics to address so it was definitely super helpful to be on the Community Health Commission. Uh, topic is sleep management. Three seniors and one junior make up the Student Health Commission with the school nurse serving as their faculty advisor. There are a lot of pressures here at Edina High School to succeed. It's great to have a high level of excellence however if your health is suffering because of that, uh, that's, that's not going to be helpful to anybody. The student-led group provides a platform to have their voice heard in the conversation around student health. A lot of times adults are like, you have to get eight hours of sleep a day and sometimes it's just not possible for a high school student with all the extracurriculars and like homework that we have going on. 
planning monthly activities to address one of their four key areas of focus, sleep deprivation, nutrition, exercise, and relaxation, keeps the monthly meetings busy. Especially like with the dodgeball tournament and smoothie making classes, I think we'll see a lot of positive um, response from the students and hopefully it will help them start to um, look at their health a little more and see what they can do to improve it. Adi noticed, serving on the Community Health Commission, the discussion around adolescence focused on alcohol and substance abuse, while issues like sleep, stress management, and eating disorders seem to be ignored compared with drug and alcohol education, which can be daunting. So I just wanted to form this commission to discuss those other issues, have a more holistic approach to student health. From Edina High School, Matt Koskinen, Edina 16. The Student Health Commission aims to have even more open communication between the city and the school where they can address student health matters. Thanks for watching this episode of Agenda Edina. I'm your host, Dorothea Marty.